now, now we're going to move from kind of big picture stuff uh, to thinking of an example of an ecosystem in action um, and looking at the DTIF project, uh, AI in colorectal cancer detection. Um, and for those of you that might not be aware, the, the DTIF or Disruptive Technologies and Innovation Fund, uh, which we'll hear a little bit more about later, is an Irish government supported collaboration that includes industry, academics and clinicians. Um, and here to tell us a little bit more about that is Dr. Sergei Zouk from IBM Research Ireland. Uh, you're very welcome, Sergei. Uh, hi, Niall. Hello, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I am a technical lead uh, of the IBM research team, uh, which represents IBM in the digital surgery project, Future of Colorectal Cancer Diagnostics and Treatment. And I'll try to give a brief overview of some of the work we're doing with the partners uh, from Mater Hospital and RCSI on uh, perfusion quantification and uh, with a specific focus on detection of colorectal cancer. Uh, this work, in fact, at least we think so, demonstrates you know, ecosystem in action uh, from the initial ideation stage all the way up to the first version of working prototype which works on real data, uh, which also puts together concepts from AI, biophysics, surgery, and chemistry. And like Jeff mentioned, we try to put together uh, right knowledge, bring in technological tools and trying to solve a real, a real challenge which uh, occurs in clinics. Okay. So this was mentioned many times. And for example, it was noted by Leo Varadkar in his opening address that uh, our project was one of the first projects to be awarded around 6 million euros from the Disruptive Technology Innovation Fund. And uh, like I said already, it's a collaborative effort with the Digital Surgery Unit at Mater Hospital, Chemistry at RCSI, and a Digital Pathology SME Decipherx. Right, so let, let me try to take you on a quick journey through perfusion quantification, AI techniques and uh, uh, tumor signatures from ideas to the, to the prototype. So first of all, um, what we are trying to do, we're trying to quantify perfusion. Perfusion is a flow of blood through a biological tissue. And uh, our hypothesis is that Perfusion patterns can serve as a marker to identify malignant tumors. To confirm this hypothesis, we look at the structure of capillaries as blood flow is largely defined by their geometry. So cancer tissue, it's well known, grows its own blood supply. This process is called angiogenesis. And the question we have, which actually comes from, from uh, surgeons like Ronan Cahill, for example, uh, how the abnormal structure of cancer capillaries will influence dynamic of the blood flow and what kind of data can we use to quantify this influence? And uh, so this is a kind of an answer of, for the uh, second uh, question. What kind of data can we use? Um, the answer is fluorescence. There is a fluorescent dye that has been in clinical use for decades. It's called ICG. Once injected, it is distributed throughout the body uh, via vascular system. And shortly after injection, an endoscopic camera starts shining light at the tissue of interest. And once ICG gets into the capillaries of the tissue, it starts absorbing the light first and then emits light back, but at a different wavelength. That emitted light is captured by NIR sensor of the camera image on the right, right here. And sequence of such images, we call them NIR videos, can be used to visualize blood perfusion patterns. And so just to sum up, to verify our hypothesis that perfusion patterns can serve as a marker for malignant tumors, we look at blood perfusion visualized by fluorescence of ICG captured by NIR camera. And in this first step, what we are looking to do is we're looking to decide uh, where is cancer? Is this cancer at all? In other words, we want to decide, we want to identify uh, 
type of a tissue? Is it a cancerous tissue or not? Is it a benign growth or not? So those are really important questions specifically in surgery, in colorectal surgery. So here is a typical example of an output of an endoscope. Large panel to the right shows the tissue inside the column and the left, on the left there is a black and white rectangle which displays NIR video. And just to recap, ICG is injected, the camera uh, shines light at the tissue in the field of view and once ICG gets into the blood, it starts absorbing and emitting light and the latter emission is captured by NIR sensor of the camera and which we call NIR video and you can see this NIR video here. So basically this video is our input data. Given this video, we try to quantify perfusion and based on the quantification results, we want to classify the tissue. Now, first step, which is uh, kind of very, very important is data extraction. Uh, this step is straightforward only if the camera and the tissue within the field of view do not move. For interoperative surgical use, the camera is handheld usually and tissue contracts and expands, making acquisition very challenging, as you can see from this video. Uh, so we start off by selecting a number of so-called regions of interest, these boxes here. And then, uh, for example, the white and blue boxes, each is selected at a certain location uh, on the tissue. And uh, what happens then is we collect NIR intensities within each box. NIR intensities are represented by brightness pixel brightness within NIR image. And uh, then we try to compensate motion of the camera and motion of the tissue in order to extract this pixel brightness and plot it over time as a time series of which basically represents dynamics of the fluorescence within each of these boxes, regions of interest. And uh, you can see this time series coming up here on the right. Uh, so that's, that's, shall we say, one of the most important steps in data extraction. If we don't get this right, we get a lot of noisy data and then classification results based on noisy data are not very accurate. Now, let's say we got this right and most of the time we do, What's next? We take the extracted time series of intensities and fit a biophysical model to estimate a number of explainable parameters. So you can see this model here and parameters of these models serve as a set of features, which is then fed into a classifier. Now, the, the entire pipeline, we call it a 1D prototype, is depicted here. So we pick regions of interest, collect their brightness data, get fluorescence time series, use those fluorescence time series as an input for fitting parameters of the biophysical models. And the results of the fits you can see as a smooth curves right here. We pull out the parameters from each of the fitted model and uh, send them to classifier, which then uh, needs some supervised training. After that training, it's, it is able to predict unseen, uh, predict, and classify, predict labels for unseen regions of interest. Now, uh, important thing is that this pipeline can work nearly in real time. And because of the uh, biophysical prior knowledge used in this model, we don't require thousands of video in training. For one thing, for another parameters are explainable. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick 
demo of this pipeline. Uh, so it's it was screen recorded, you know, to prevent any demo effects like crashes and hangs. But this is how long it takes on a standard uh, Mac laptop. Uh, and uh, we didn't try to speed it up or anything like that. You'll just see this, this works nearly in real time. So uh, this uh, screen recording shows the whole process of data acquisition, feature extraction, and finally presents the classification results. Because I'm not a surgeon, the medical expert, for example, like Ronan and his team would annotate the endoscopic video. And you can see these annotations here. And uh, uh, red is malignant growth, potentially. So this is a suspicious region. And then uh, in green, you can see parts of the tissue which a surgeon believes to be healthy. Now, we then select some regions of interest within, within these areas. Uh, by the way, the regions of interest can be seen as digital biopsy sites. And uh, what happens next is these regions are selected. And we start uh, the motion compensation in order to extract time series. Now, th this is done on uh, one of the actual uh, videos provided by uh, Ronan. And now you can see uh, the whole procedure in, in action. Uh, what happens now is motion compensation in order to extract fluorescence time series representing each of the boxes here. And remember, this video is used only for motion compensation. This other one, the NIR video, is actually used for data extraction because pixel brightnesses here represent fluorescence intensities over time. The intensities are plotted on the right, also in real time. And uh, once we have enough data, I think we are looking for the initial uptake to peak and then to see some of the decay or washout. Uh, we can stop. It's around 50 seconds in this case. And in the background, what happens is a fit. We find parameters of biophysical model. You can see the curves representing solution of that model. Data is, of course, a lot noisier compared to the model. Uh, so fit is done, it happens pretty quickly, and classifier comes up with the, it predicts the labels. So for this case, we have uh, pathology results, and uh, I can tell you that, for example, uh, this suspicious region as well as this turn out to be cancer indeed, and uh, this, this region is healthy. So uh, the curves here represent our representations of the real data and serve as a, as a set of biophysically explainable parameters for the classifier. Now, um, this, this result was presented to medical imaging community. And uh, first it was basically first confirmation of our hypothesis, uh, namely that perfusion patterns can serve as a marker for malignant tumors, was presented to one of the major medical imaging events last year, uh, Mikhail, uh, got a lot of positive feedback. Now, just to quickly summarize that result, on a relatively small cohort of 20 patients, uh, we received 86% in terms of ROI accuracy, which, is, uh, which shows how many times on average we predict the correct label for an ROI, right? Case accuracy is, uh, shows prediction per patient. In other words, if the patient has cancer or not, and here it's significantly better, 95%. Now, specificity is at 100%, and it shows the percentage of 
healthy patients which were correctly identified. Now, uh, this was a specificity, so sensitivity shows the percentage of patients with cancer which were correctly identified, and here we're also at 100%. This is pretty uh, encouraging result, even on a small cohort of patients. Now we're working to extend it to a larger cohort. This, uh, this result was also well received by surgical community. In fact, it made it to the cover of page of British Journal of Surgery and got a high altmetric score, which measures broad scientific impact of the paper, including mentions on uh, social media platforms. Now, uh, I want to stop here and mention that beyond colorectal cancer, there are other use cases for perfusion quantification. So for example, uh, it's reconstructive surgery, liver cancer, uh, and here you have image from brain surgery. This is uh, where brain is scanned, a screen for AVM, arterial malformation, where arteries and veins are connected in abnormal disruptive ways and the surgery needs to be done to correct for this. And yet another application, which I believe was mentioned in the beginning by Silvana was a fluorescence guided surgical robots, because in fact, fluorescence can be used, you know, as a uh, GPS or navigation inside human body uh, to drive robot towards physiological information in the tissue, not just anatomy, but uh, physiology as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sergey. Um, I know I'm biased since I'm involved, but uh, it's really, uh, really cool stuff. Um, 